We have thought for a long time now that being sanitary and being hygienic and being sterile was what we needed in order to be healthy. But it turns out that we have this entity called the microbiome, which is three to five pounds of bacteria and other uh, organisms that live in and on our body. And it turns out also that these organisms are orchestrating in relationship with our body, many, many, many healthy cycles, and they basically keep us healthy. So from our gut, they're regulating how we digest and our immune system in our gut, from our immune system, which is in constant conversation with all these different diverse organisms. Basically being exposed to all of these organisms is critically important. Meanwhile, kids are washing their hands with antibacterial soap. They're on antibiotics at the drop of a hat. The houses are being cleaned with bleach. We use dishwashers instead of using sponges, which actually have bacteria that are potentially really beneficial because we need a lot of diverse organisms. And kids are indoors so much, whether it's because they're on screens or because of stranger danger or because they have a lot of homework, whatever it is they're not getting that diverse exposure to microorganisms that are really very critical for gut, immune, and brain health. There's actually studies that have looked at children who live in urban apartments and compared them to children who live on farms and looked at the diversity of organisms and how many bacteria live in each environment. And it turns out that there's an equal number of bacteria that live in the urban apartment as compared to the farm. But the difference is that children who live on farms have far more diverse exposure to bacteria, And that's why children who live on farms are a lot less likely to have allergies, asthma, autoimmune conditions, and other things. And they're actually much better prepared to fight infection as well, because when they have such a broad array of organisms, it means that no one organism is gonna grow out of control. When I began practicing, I did not want to write a prescription for every single kid that walked in my door, um, particularly for kids who had behavior issues or emotional issues or focus issues. I felt like there had to be another way, so I dived into the literature. Essentially, I tried to find what was out there that was in food and in nutrition and in nutrients um, and in herbs. And that's really still what I use in my practice as the mainstay to treat children with all those kinds of chronic issues. The first thing that I tell parents, and I think this is across the board, whether a child has an issue or if they're perfectly fine and you don't want them to develop any issues, is to really cut processed food as much as possible, which means really looking to eliminate food chemicals like MSG and aspartame um, or any artificial sweeteners, things like high fructose corn syrup, food dyes, preservatives, all of those are things which can be very disruptive to neurological health. And I've seen very miraculous reversals at times um, simply by just cutting out food chemicals. The next thing I recommend is looking at possible food reactivity. So a child who has any kinds of, let's say eczema or asthma or hives or rashes or stomach aches, chronic stomach aches or constipation, oftentimes they're reacting to food. And when you remove that food, then you see a huge leap in neurologic health or in terms of mood behavior, all of those things. And the third thing I would say is um, I'm a big fan of fat for children. So the brain is made up 60 to 70% of fat. And so healthy fats, which can include things like butter or ghee, coconut oil, olive oil. I'll even recommend if, you know, using like marrow from marrow bones and soups or things like that. Any pastured eggs. All of those kinds of foods are filled with healthy fats and actually healthy cholesterol, which is critically important for brain health and for mood health.